How's it going everybody? My name is Avery and today I wanted to show you this uh, I guess like a showcase video of this project that I've um, found on github uh, I guess just to talk about how I found it. I was looking for like a, a lightweight basically like an OpenGL or any sort of wrapper for uh, doing all the basic stuff you need to do with OpenGL with loading in objects and uh, things like that and while I was doing for that I found this project called Tiny Engine. I found this a few weeks ago. Um, I'm just now showing it because I just haven't had enough time um, and I didn't have enough time to really play around with it. Uh, there's still a lot of things I need to work with and figure out about it. There's not a ton of documentation. The project's still being in development, but to speak of that, it's been made by this guy named Nicholas. And so the reason it's being in development is that he just has these random side projects where he does, where he works on a things that need some sort of GUI or some, you know, window or some sort of graphic environment. And I think he's slowly importing all his projects to work on a single engine. So he's able to work easier on his own projects. So like these are just some of the projects he has right here. So I think the, the engine itself was kind of designed to be able to host all of his projects. But with that, he slowly updates it. He adds new features. Um, it's originally on C++, but I see now that there's Python that was added as well. Uh, I tried out some of the Python stuff. They didn't seem to work perfectly for me, but I'm sure that's something he's still working on. And I'll have all the links for everything in the description. And it looks like there's been some other contributors. I think it had something down here talking about people that were wanting to contribute on the project or anything like that, that they could uh, make pull requests and whatnot. And, uh, but yeah, so I just wanted to quickly show it off. Do download this project. You can just... This isn't... Uh, you'll just get it from GitHub itself, and then, so I guess, let's get the shorter link, yeah, that's what I was looking for, but you can just do git clone, and then just like that, and I already have this downloaded, so I can go where I have it downloaded, right in here, and as we can see, you have the project right here, and now, there's a header files and everything, and there's a binary for the library and whatnot. Um, he doesn't have it so it's like a drop in your project. He has it so it sets it up on your computer and everything. So down here is the compiling and linking instructions. Uh, you can do sudo setup, uh, the make setup, make helpers, make install, where the setup creates the header files. Uh, the helper has a few extra additional header files that he has. And I guess I can believe they're right here. Um, so that he has some stuff for objects and timers and a camera, um, along with helper stuff. So I think that installs and sets up all that stuff as well. The install actually uh, um, makes the, I guess it's the binary or whatever, I don't really know exactly the term for it, but it's more than just a header file. It makes the library and puts it in the correct location. If you do sudo make all, it'll do everything for you. And I already have it set up, but uh, yeah, so you can see to the headers, to the helpers, and now it's compiling everything. And for building a project, like I said, it puts in all in the right directories, so you don't need to drag and drop this into your projects directory. So you can just include it this way. Let's include tiny engine. This has so. And if you want to include any of the extra things he has, like the ones I just mentioned or showed you a second ago, the helpers, and there plus there's a few more, you can just include them this way. And whenever you compile it with G, you know, I mean whatever compiler you're using, uh, you'll just want to include it that way with the library. And here's a few more details about a uh, extra things you might need for shipping it. I guess it's like a make file. And then he has dependencies. Um, so this uses SDL2. I guess it also uses glue and GLM. I'm not sure if all the windows are just being shown with SDL2 or if it's using GLM for the windows. Um, then OpenGL3 is the background. It's, I mean, it's what he does for all the rendering. Then I guess he probably displays it on one of these windows, like a window using that and has just the controls with SDL2, but I'm not positive. Um, but yeah, he has a list of all the things that you need just right here. And this is if you're using apt, and this is if you're using DNF for managing your packages. Um, he has the Mac OS stuff down here. Windows, he doesn't have instructions for it. Um, he probably, I don't, so he hasn't ported it to it, but I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard to port. So if you guys are interested, that's something you guys can probably do yourself. Um, considering all these dependencies, they all work perfectly fine on Windows. I just know, like by default, when you install SDL2, um, maybe the location is just a little bit different. Instead of like how this one's Tiny Engine, Tiny Engine, I think like SDL2, SDL. But I think on Windows, it's uh, a little bit different. So you just need to 
change that up a little bit, make it so it works. So he has some sample projects. Um, not every single sample project works when I try to run it. Um, for example, the trees, uh, it doesn't show the leaves, it shows the shadows. And you can even adjust the leaves, but it's only adjusting the shadows, it never shows the leaves for me. But um, we can go ahead and look at all the examples he has. And so like I said, most of them work, not every single one of them. Uh, I can look at, I forgot what this one is called right here. Whatever one he had at the top. That's right here. Uh, Julia. So where's Julia? Um, Julia's number four. And we'll just want to make that. And he has a make file on every single one of them. So you can just go on them and just do make or make all. And then, uh, so. Uh, so he has I am GUI. It's part of the thing. Um, it's built in. Uh, he has everything set up for I am GUI. And I believe it comes installed whenever you download his stuff. Or I guess it comes downloaded when you download it and you can set it up. Uh, so whenever you on his sample programs and also it's the default for his engine whenever you click escape a little I am GUI configuration pops up you can control some of this stuff or at least for all the, the examples he has um, yes yes if I remember yeah I mean I don't really know exactly what all this stuff is but uh, you can play around with some of the samples and he mentions he doesn't really have too much documentation on everything but you can go ahead and check out the code for everything and it's pretty simple to do including with that I was able to look at um, so the scene one right here I'll make that real quick the scene one loads in some object files and uh, let's check that out so here's a scene right here you can scroll in just with a mouse movement and I believe Okay, so there's no rotation or anything, but uh, yeah, like I said, you can click escape, pops in a little I am GUI thing, and you can control some of the brightness, you can control, that is some of the features, you can change the light color, just like that. So all these are single objects that he puts into it, so whenever you check out the code, it's really easy to do that as well. Um, let's see where I had my own, I just, with that one scene, I had my own example where I was able to already have it right here um, it literally uses the exact same example I got rid of the I'm I know I still that I'm good I lied about that but uh made it so you can control this little car it the camera at the moment's not following the car and there's no sort of collision or anything but I, I just added the car in and the camera follows the car a little bit but I guess I didn't configure it all the way so like it follows with the car if the car goes away um, but yeah that's basically it it's extremely easy to load in an object. Uh, I'll just pull up this. And. Okay, so he has all. That's just going to take me a moment. Um. Okay, so I guess, oh, GLM, I had that mixed up. GLM's just for math, isn't it? Uh, that wasn't the window stuff. But, uh, yeah, so you load a model just like this. He has this model, which I believe is one of the extra things he had to set up. I think it's maybe with the helpers. Um, path is just where I have the models. And then I load it in that car right here. It's called a car. And then right here is to do the translation. So I tell it where I want the car to be. I just have the setup as the variables. And then for drawing it, uh... I just added it right here, just with all the other objects he had. And he has shaders. Um, I don't the shaders and everything work. I don't really know too much about shaders, but uh, he has everything for that, uh, at least for all the basic stuff. And I guess I assume that's just using the GL S or I forgot the name for it, but the the code, the language for making shaders. Um, along with that, let's see. I believe okay and then right here his sample programs he has it on his website as well but like um, the default application layout I guess I'm gonna show right here you want to include the tiny engine and that's just the main and you do a tiny window you can give it the title the width and the height and then there is a few different things like this and I can explain in a second but he has a loop and then he has the quit so he has them down 
Let's see where he talked about him. Oh, actually, maybe it was on their wiki. Yeah, it is. So, he has a handler, which is for, it's basically for the input. Everything uses, like I said, that input's using SDL, so it just uses the same SDL tag for that. Um, and then the interface, it's a, uh, this has to do with IM GUI. So if you turn on the interface, it automatically makes it so you escape it with escape, or you open it and close it with escape. Um, that's just basically it. You can look at all the examples. He has a lot of examples where he shows how to do everything with them. Uh, the pipeline is, I believe this is passing in stuff for the render. Like this is where I have it draw the car and whatnot. It's in the pipeline. Uh, the loop that just does every single thing every single second. Um, no, on the FPS. Uh, but yeah, he has stuff talking about everything. He even has some networking stuff that I haven't played around with. Um, as you can see right here in this sample program, it basically uses the one that he had showed. Well, I guess on that other page, where it has the window, and then I load in the object, the car, the event handler, and then in here I just do the SDL escape, and then right here I do event.quit. And that's basically just going to make it so it closes the window, because his by default with the hand with the interface was for the IN GUI that we escape, but I just want to escape to close the window, so you can just reset it this way. Um, it doesn't actually turn off the IM GUI thing. Well, the IM GUI is not enabled, but I don't know how to reset the IM GUI to set to a different button. Um, I know there's for sure ways to do it, and you can also just do SDL stuff just straight up into it. So I guess it is an SDL window, and I'm thinking about it because SDL set resizable. I set it to false. So, and you can just get the window from this tiny view, G, -O G window. You kind of just have to look through the codes because it doesn't really show everything. Um, even though I load in the model and I do the car render, I still don't have everything set up so it's not actually displaying the car. But uh, that's basically it. Um, it's pretty simple to use. He has a good amount of stuff showing how to use everything with all of his examples. And uh, just the page itself has a good amount of examples and talks about how everything works so I probably plan on using this for at least some projects or at least basing some projects off of it I thought it was pretty useful um, it's really I mean it's like it says it's a tiny engine it's tiny it's a uh, makes everything a little bit simpler you don't have to write out the code for everything I mean it's a wrapper basically a uh, wrapper slash engine but yeah if you guys are interested in it I'll have the link in the description go ahead and check it out thought it was pretty cool looking and I just wanted to share with you guys. Have a good one. Bye.